Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. John Cullen and I have a very special guest today. A very special guest, Art, and an old friend, Herbie J. Pilato. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've seen uh, any of our interviews with Herbie J. before, you'll know that he is a very prolific author, uh, really an expert on uh, television and pop culture. Um, he's written books on people like Elizabeth Montgomery, on the phenomenon of the Gidget type of shows in the 50s and 60s. Really a, a fun guy to talk to, but he's got a new book. He's got a brand new book, and that's what we're going to talk to him about. That today. he does, and it looks like it's about Christmas, but the real question is, is it? Aha! That's well, without further ado, <laughs> let's find out. And here's Herbie J. Pilato. Herbie J., good to see you. Hi, nice to see you guys. After all this time, nice to be back. Yeah, good to oh, see you. We, we missed you. Listen, um, tell us about the book. It's called The 12, I got to read the title, 12 Best Secrets of Christmas. And the subtitle is Treasure House of December Memories Revealed. And that's really the key to it, isn't it? The December Memories. Yes, yes. It's, it's really, um, I kind of look at it as a cross between um, life's little instruction book and everything um, I know I learned in kindergarten with a Christmas twist. It's, it's the stories, my memories of growing up in Rochester, New York, my hometown in the 1960s and 1970s and celebrating the holidays with my amazing family. Well, they're great stories, and of course, you did have a pretty large family, nuclear family, whatever they call it, the, the extended family, cousins and aunts and uncles and stuff. And you, I have to tell you, you're a great storyteller. Um, mm -hmm. Having read the, some of your other books, you're a great storyteller, but this is, um, this is really personal. And what's wonderful about it is it's so warm-hearted. Um, it, you know, it's about Christmas, but it's not about Christmas. It's not about the 12 days of Christmas, really, that that old fashioned um, um, uh, tradition of giving gifts every, you know, and the song, what, what's the song? 10 Lords a Leaping and eight right. goats a goading and I don't know. Partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is one Herbie, this is one Herbie J, J remembering, remembrancing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. so th they were, they were told, why don't we get a, a tease the audience uh, uh, because they can go out and order this book right now. But g give a little uh, taste of uh, one of your favorite memories of your, one of your 12 secrets. I got to say my, probably, I mean, gosh, they're all really favorites, but one of the cherished moments is, um, is um, Mary's gift shop. Yes, and, yes, I love oh that. Oh my gosh. I love that. I remember that day like it was yesterday. It was yeah. this little dark and dingy shop yep. in in um, my old neighborhood. And just like I talk about in the book, it never really looked bright or happy. And my mother, we, we, used, to, we used to pick names in those days for the Christmas. We used to have a, like a secret Santa. So everybody in the family would get together on the day after, either on Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving, and pull names. So my mom... I think it was my Aunt Rita, um, who was a very blessed uh, human being who did much for the community, and she was a very successful teacher, and she was married to a very successful dentist, so they had a wonderful life. So, But my mother um, got her name. So it's like, what do you get somebody who has everything? Mm. So I figured we were going to go downtown to one of the, you know, and I was going to go to Toyland, which is... Uh, what they used to call siblings, you know, like in A Christmas Story, the movie where all the Christmas decorations, <laughs> it was just like that. We had our own little version of that back in Rochester. So I, that's where I wanted to go. Well, my mom goes, no, we're going to go to Mary's gift shop. I'm like, Mary's gift shop? What? You know, so when we got there, just like when I talk about in the book, it was dark and dingy. And there was this small, frail woman named Mary, who ran the shop. She had all these knickknacks around. I didn't really see any 
Christmas lights. I don't even think, think I saw a Christmas tree. And my father's waiting in the car. It's freezing outside. He's like, come on, you people, let's go. And by the time it was over, I mean, I really don't want, I really want people to read the, the, the gist of the story in the book. But by the time it was over, I was just blown away by the sentiment of what, I might start crying now, of what that woman was doing. You know, she, it, it, it was a combination of no matter what, she was still going to keep her store open. It was a combination of understanding the real sentiment of gift giving and Christmas. It was a combination of the blessings of simplicity as opposed to, you know, elaborate gifting. Uh, just so many different things. It's just yeah. my favorite chapter in the book. You know, when I when I when I uh, read that chapter, um, uh, I automatically renamed it in my mind. It wasn't so much the gift that you found inside and the surprise you found, but it was don't judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. And that was so the shop looked dingy, but your mother knew that there was value inside. And when once she brought you in then that lesson remained with you forever. And that's really what I see about this entire wonderful book. Yep. As a grandparent of our age, and I don't care of uh, what faith you are or anything else, this is really a story about those memories of our uh, youth, of our uh, uh, when we were really, really young, that lasts with us forever. They're not about an expensive gift, although there may be wonderful memories about that, but it's about the little things of the interaction of a family. It reminded, I immediately thought back to once when uh, uh, I left a vice grip uh, on, on the porch and it had rained and we found it about a week later and it was rusted. And I knew I was in trouble and I, I was going to fess up and I told my uncle who lived with us, just like you, we had uh, a cousin uh, and an aunt and an uncle who lived in our house, so we shared a house. And um, uh, Uncle Mo, who was a, a drummer and a musician uh, for many, for many, many years, uh, said, you know what? Before you tell your father, go tell your father, but before, let's go downstairs into the workshop. And we went that, put some oil on it, got all the rust off, and it was good as new. And so that's just, I was going to fess up anyway, but he said, but let's wait a moment. And he took care of me. And so that no matter what happens, there's there's somebody in your life who's going to give you a hand or show you something special in that moment has stayed with me. And to me, all of your stories, whether they're vastly different in subject matter, all say the same thing. Those wonderful memories that we have of people, places and things in our childhood. So every grandparent, particularly if you celebrate Christmas, this is a perfect book to get, not only yeah. to feel good yourself, but to read to your grandchildren. Well, it's a, it's a great, uh, as we call it, Christmas gift. But I think Art is right. It's not about um, Christmas, the Christian holiday. It's about giving. Mm -hmm. It's about the universal um, uh, joy we get from giving. And um, and family, it's all about family. But it it uh, I think Art and I were talking earlier, and I think um, we were discussing how this isn't a Christmas book. And I said I wanted to say, yeah, it really is a Christmas book in the sense that Christmas, there are universal values to Christmas. Even if if you're Jewish and celebrate Hanukkah, it's the universal gift of giving, and giving is is when you receive more graces, if you will. And that's what all the stories are about. Yeah, I mean, and that's why, you know, I dedicated the book, and if I could read the dedication, uh, here's the hardcover edition. Yeah. <laughs> um, it says here, oh, let's see, dedicated to love, however it may be expressed and experienced by anyone of any culture, heritage, creed, political party, gender, sexual orientation, or religious or spiritual belief. Yep. Covers across the board. 
um, who this book is for. It just happens to be, yeah. um, you know, centered around Christmas because that's my experience. And these are my memories, but I tried to universalize those memories for everyone. And I can't tell you how many people who have already read the book and loved it and said, you know, Herb, as different as my life has been, we had similar childhoods, or I remember doing those similar things sure. with my family. So it's it's a there's a universal consciousness, you know, that I believe we all that is we're all connected somehow, and we just interpret the same things and the same feelings differently with different experiences. But there is an underlining similarity between us all. Yeah. Well, the book is chock full of heart. Uh, and that's that's the universal uh, quality. Yeah, and also but, uh, I want to say I want to say to our audience that uh, especially to our audience uh, of uh, fifty and over, that one of my childhood heroes, and I could hear his voice in every story you told was Gene Shepherd. It was oh. al almost like listening to Gene Shepherd, yes. and in a little bit more modern times, uh, uh, Harrison. Uh, uh, um, Garrison, Garrison uh, Keeler. Yep. Okay, it, it's it's the uh, the real and or imagined in your case real memories of a childhood. Uh, they 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 told it. They made up stories. They made up fictional stories mostly, uh, but these are real stories. But it's the same voice. So if yep. you wow. if you like them, you're going to love this book. And as I say, that yeah, it's great. Uh, it'll help people remember their own childhood, but especially if you have grandkids, I could see reading these stories to them. Maybe one every night, if, if you if you do celebrate twelve nights, or if you you know tuck them in a bed, you could read them a couple of stories about the kinds of things because they're building their own memories. Yeah. Uh, at this current time, so do us a favor. Where can people get a hold of uh, of uh, not only this book but any of your books? Well, it's all over the place. Certainly, if you go to Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com, the Christmas book, along with my books on Mary Tyler Moore and Elizabeth Montgomery and all the others, um, are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. You can get them uh, personally signed directly from me by going to my website, HerbieJPilato.com, or you could contact me through um, Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, and you can contact me there. Either way, you just do a private message or an email through the website and let me know which book you want and I'll personally sign it for you. Well, that's wonderful because I, I don't know about everybody else, but I just love uh, signed editions. I think mm -hmm. they're twice as valuable. Yeah, and I ask people to let me know exactly how you want it signed. Do you want it, you know, for you, is it Dear Joey? Is right. it Dear Annette? Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy yeah. New Year. I, I asked them to specifically let me know when they want it. Because sometimes they say, well, make it for a birthday for my friend. So I write down the date. And you know, whenever you sign a book, whether you authored it or not, you always put the date. Mm -hmm. So with this particular book, I'm always gonna sign you know, Christmas this year or whatever year that they purchase it in, sure. unless they ask for a specific other date. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, as Art said, it's not just, I mean, it is about Christmas, but it's about giving and it's about, um, it's about the grace we get from giving. It's what we receive. And all your, all your chapters, your 12 chapters, your 12 secrets of Christmas are lessons. That's, that's what I took away. They're lessons of life and love. So it's a book good for you year round, but especially as a Christmas gift, I think. Yes. Uh, well, yes. I mean, it, and I think it's small enough to fit in um, at least the paperback in, in the stocking stuffer to make a stocking stuffer too. So it's, it's, it's really oh, a, a life lesson book for, yes, every day of the year. Um, and I, that's probably I'm working on right now because the response has been so wonderful, I'm working on the 12 best secrets of summer. <laughs> um, so that's that will be that will be coming down the road. And I had certainly not planned that, you yeah. know, but after I went, I went, wait a minute, I did that that summer and 
I remember that beautiful experience that summer. So this yeah. could possibly even be uh, another book after the summer book as well. But well, you know, so, you know something, Herbert J., that yeah. you're, you've always been equal opportunity, except in, in uh, Elizabeth Montgomery, who you've written many books on, and you're a huge fan. You're one of her best fans, but you knew her well. But uh, you wrote uh, on Gidget and, and all of the uh, iconic uh, female stars of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. But you also did one for the guys. I forgot which one came first, but they're both terrific. And uh, so, yeah, so you, you, want, you, you, want, you always take care of everybody. Uh, so one, uh, one other thing that I'd like to ask is, uh, uh, because uh, we only get to speak to you every six months or so, uh, you've really been busy. What are, what's what's new on your plate? What's coming up? Well, I just finished the um, audio commentary. Very excited about this for the Blu-ray release of both the Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman. As the author of the Bionic book, I was invited to do that, and that was an absolute joy. And the Six Million Dollar Man has been out for, on Blu-ray. Has been out for a couple months now. And it was recently nominated um, for a Saturn Sci-Fi Award, which is one of the highest awards in the media for the sci-fi community. Wow. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Well, I, I, it was Shout Factory and, and a wonderful producer uh, uh, that I worked with who um, um, invited me to be a part of it. Um, so I'm just honored that I was you had this small little role in it. But the um, I've never seen, and here it is right here, actually. I've never seen such a beautiful transfer of episodes, um, TV episodes, as I have on this uh, box set of the $6 million man Blu-ray. Just beautiful. I mean, crystal clear. And the fact that I got to you know, talk about my some of my favorite episodes on that show as well as here's the, the DVD version, but the Blu-ray version of The Bionic Woman looks similar to this, mm -hmm. um, like Bigfoot and John Saxon's episode and of The Six Million Dollar Man where he played the robot, the evil robot. Monty Markham, who played The Seven Million Dollar Man, he was a more or less an evil character. Monty Markham was supposed to be the first, was supposed to be, was originally cast or considered for the six million dollar man, but something didn't happen. He, he didn't get the part, and Lee Majors came along. So anyway, very excited about that. Um, I'm working on a special documentary right now that I'm not allowed to to mention what it is yet, but it will be out um, within the year. I have a, a new retroactive television history book, which talks about the positive influence of classic TV across the board. And that's called retroactive television. Yeah. And that should be out within the year. I just finished my Sean Connery biography, which should be out soon within mm. the year, year again. My oh, Diana I've been looking Rick, forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was an interesting book. Um, because it had a you know delicate dance between everybody who loves Sean and then his dealing with you know, things like his his first wife accused making accusations about, you know, him abusing her and all of that. So it was, it was a tough balance. Um, but also Diana Rigg biography I'm working on right now. And then a Spielberg Lucas combined book about their best films. So in addition to me starting uh, my new Newsbreak um, articles on my Newsbreak blog, which I absolutely love doing. Um, it's it's a busy time. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we ought to let you get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like what? <laughs> yeah, break breaks over. But uh, now that because uh, we love having you on, uh, but we know now that there are several new books and product releases, and so uh, we're going to expect you back and uh, to uh, tell our audience about them so that they can get all that information. But of course, they can go to HerbieJPilato.com and um, uh, see all the latest uh, information because that's that's your like your hub central of uh, your life. Uh, and well, you know, I want I want to say this though about you guys in particular. I mean, the essence of what you bring 
to the media, TV, screen, YouTube, world, whatever, the essence of what you guys bring uh, to your audience and to your viewers is exactly uh, the core message of what I've tried to present and study and document over the years about the positive effect that TV shows, however you want, however they're presented on whatever platform, how much the power of positivity they can really have on the, the world as opposed to the dark and dingy uh, programming that is just pervasive on TV today, the violence and the vulgarity, which I'm so much against in film and on TV. What you guys do with your celebrating act two is, is commendable and exactly, again, what I think TV and all media related platforms should be about. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Herbie J, we look forward to seeing you again real soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.